Welcome to the lecture, Job Scam Ads. How to protect yourself from job scam and immigration fraud. In this lecture, we will learn that not all job ads posted on the internet about openings in Canada are real. Some apps are intended to deceive you. As a foreign worker, you need to watch out for this situation and protect yourself. Signs of a fake job ad. Employer or recruiter ask you to pay for training or materials or anything else as a condition of employment. And this is a very important point to clarify with people. When a recruiter is working on behalf of a Canadian employer, the recruiter gets paid by the employer. The foreign worker doesn't have to pay the recruiter. The only time a foreign worker has to pay is only for the immigration process if it's going to require an immigration consultant or a lawyer for the immigration part of the process. But when it comes to the recruiting part, getting hired by a Canadian employer through a recruiter or headhunter, it's the employer who pay the recruiter, not the foreign worker. That has to be clear. So if you find somebody asking you for money as a recruiter, then you know it's something fake, it's something uh, suspicious, because by law, it's against the law that recruiter collect money directly from foreign workers. The employer is paying for that service to that recruiter, okay? The ads do not contain an employer name, address, phone number. Instead, you will see only a mailbox or fax number. That's called blind ads. Uh, if it's through the internet, you send me an email to this or send me your phone number for Facebook or that kind of situation. Then you know uh, that something is suspicious, okay? You offer a job without an application or interview. Sometimes they tell you that the job very fast, very quick interview or no interview or you need to take a training, you need to pay for this, download this information, so be careful. Well, it doesn't behave like a regular job process when you have to interview. In this case, uh, people living outside of Canada probably be using means like uh, Skype or video conference. And they need, before that, you need to send your resume, you need to send your cover letter, you need to be contacted. You need to follow the regular process. If something looks too fast, too easy, uh, you need to watch out, okay? The company asks you to wire money or ask for your credit card information. Again, recruiters are never going to ask you for credit card information or to wire money to any account. So be very careful. Sometimes these people are not even in Canada. They are doing something from your own country or in a different country. They just want to scam, okay? The company asks you to pay for a credit report as part of the application process or to pay for training. Again, another no-no. They're not supposed to do that under the law. So if somebody is asking you for that, then you know there's an issue. You receive a quick response to your email inquiry that tells you that they have reviewed your resume when you didn't even send it. Oh, any message from Facebook Messenger or email saying, oh, we got your application for this job. Please, you're going to have an interview. Then you know that I didn't submit any resume. Even if you're using job boards, you will know when you're applying for any job. Okay? You receive a response to your email from someone in a foreign country looking to hire people in Canada to handle accounts payable or receivables. Again, another trick that you need to watch out. You are promised high pay for not much work. When the salaries are like, seems astronomical, like, oh, you're going to do a security job on some, in, in a hotel, and they tell you you're going to be earning between $4,000 and $7,000 per month. You need to check, and now, by this time, you probably know already how to check the salary of the position in Canada before you come to Canada. So if you see that the position that they offer when you go to the job bank and you check the average salary of this position in the province or city that they're telling you, and you see that there's a big difference between what you see in the job bank website and what they promise you, then you, you know there's an issue, okay? Just keep that in mind. The most common job scams. 
work at home is can you can come here you're gonna work at home from your home don't worry hmm help want scams or oh, we need help right away we hire right away with our regular process of screening interviews making sure the job ads have all the description of the job etc 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 speeding not required speeding not required there's something very common in Canada is that the 99 percent of the Canadian employers will ask for Canadian experience and if you don't have Canadian experience because you've never been in Canada then they're gonna make sure you have a very good interview with them and a lot of reference especially if you work in other places like uh, uh, USA or uh, in other countries uh, that cannot recognize like Australia or New Zealand they will be looking for reference if you don't have the Canadian experience so be very careful when they say experience not required when a recruiter contacts you and wants you to do the interview via messenger or worse via text the job might prove it to be a scam if they ask you to be testing you that's an interview or they don't want to do a video interview they don't want to see you they you know normally they will go through a skype or some video conferencing a zoom and all those services that the employer can see you can talk to you or via the phone normally but if they don't want to do it in a, in a traditional way then be careful a tip in most cases if a job offer or business opportunity seems too good to be true it usually is okay so let's keep that in mind fake online job ads many online job sites especially free sites like Craigslist are popular forum for scammers scam job posts are often found in the part-time or entry-level job categories but can see for all type of job normally it's going to be an entry uh, position in retail restaurant uh, normally that's the type of, of job office job they're gonna advertise popular scams often promise high income for little experience or the ability to work from home you offer the job on the spot no many com uh, even the interview is too seems too short no many questions the employer didn't ask you to, if you know anything about the company when you see things too fast too easy watch out okay some tips for avoiding online job scams check the company name the address to send a resume to the email address or the phone number through a search engine and add the word scam so if your company says company called cloud well just go to google and say cloud scam and check it to see if it's something pop up in the search engine do your homework by checking websites and doing search of the company before responding research the company to see if they are legit and get as much information as you can including the employer name address phone number website and email address you can also try searching the company in LinkedIn to find existing employees in the organization that way you can really double check if the company is real watch out for phishing phishing refers to emails and websites designed to look like they come from well-known and trusted businesses in attempt to collect personal or financial information if the website is asking you for personal information date of birth address bank account things like that then you need to watch out be extremely cautious when responding to unsolicited emails from supposed employers even if the company name is well known they can say oh it's the IBM and then the address doesn't match the quality of the graphics asking different questions especially if you know you never send an application to the company watch out never click on any link or submit any information on this website you have been sent by email this link can lead to websites that look legit legitimate but they are run by scammers okay click here normal message in the email again you don't even remember applying for this this, this company so be very careful in Canada you can uh, research through the Better Business Bureau in British Columbia, for example, and that's the link, or Reference Canada. And those two, inform two sources can confirm about also uh, the employers. You can also try sending them an email or phone the company to check if the company is where it claims to be. You can call them, okay, 
asked to speak to the relevant contact person or human resources staff member about the advertised job. Try. Sometimes they put a number of the real place, and when you call, the company says, no, we don't have any job advertised right now. So just try. Just check to make sure that you don't fall in for uh, a, a trap, okay? Paying for training or employment search. Watch out for employers that try to make you pay fees to get a job. No real employer or employment agency should ask you to pay a fee before you start working. And also be aware of emails or calls from so-called employment agencies telling you that they have been asked by an employer to screen you for a particular job. Again, if you don't remember contacting those people, you don't remember sending a, a emails to those people, you don't remember even the, the, the position, then you know it's, it's uh, very, very cheating. Be aware of employers who ask to pay for the following services as a condition of employment. A specialized job training in exchange for guaranteed employment. That's a no no. Prepayment for materials or supplies. Oh, you need to pay for the training material. No. Background or credit check. You need to pay for the background or credit check. No, no. Application processing fees for the the application of the job per se? No. The only fee you should pay in the process of being hired through a Canadian employer is when you're doing your immigration process and that's the application for the government and pay ask you to but anything else that they call it uh, without using a, a professional consultant to be questioned okay transportation costs most of the employers and there's something important if it's an employer for a position that is uh, initial position a C or D level normally company like to cover the cost they won't ask you to pay for it unless you are get, being hired as a manager or, or a supervisor then that way that cost normally if you, you might have to pay for those costs because your position is an a b a uh, type of, of job but for initial entry job you shouldn't pay for transportation you're being asked for personal information if you feel uncomfortable with some of the information requested, either decline or proceed with string cautions. Okay. Real employment ads will not ask for any banking or personal information or for any money deposits. Clear enough. So a scam. Do not provide personal information in your resume on application forms from other online job sites. And in the North American Canadian way of resume, you don't even to put your picture. Cannot be, you don't need to put picture or date of birth or things like that, okay? So, if they ask, uh, watch out if they ask you for your social insurance number, especially if you are a student, international student here in Canada. If they ask you for age, marital status, and date of birth. If they ask you for driver's license number, if they ask you for health card, in case you're living in Canada already. If they ask you for your banking or financial information, you that include credit card, bank account numbers, or any personal identification numbers, PIN. So watch out. If they're asking for that, just get away. In summary, what we're seeing in this uh, section and for the end of the lecture is that we learn about what is a work permit in the uh, section. We learn also about the type of work permit in Canada, what is a LMIA, when we need an MIA. We learn about the bridging open work permit and when to use it. We learn about special situations uh, when it comes to status and uh, expedite processing. We also learn how to check a Canadian employer if they're in compliance with IRCC. Uh, we also learn how to protect ourselves in the last lecture from job scam. I hope you like this lecture and this section and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.